seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Good morning. My name is Richard Weitz. I'm the department chairman of the Aviation Science Department here at Central Texas College. Um, I'm here this morning to tell you a little bit about our program, the type of equipment that we have, and then also uh, what you would need to do to get enrolled into the program um, and what we're doing during these uh, crazy COVID-19 times. So the first thing, uh, our degree that we have is an Associate of Applied Science degree. Uh, that leads to a commercial single engine uh, airplane uh, instrument certificate rating. Uh, at the end of it, you would be a commercial pilot. Uh, you still would need more flight time to go out and get an airline job. Uh, most of our students go on and become a flight instructor. Uh, as a flight instructor working with students, you're able to build the time that you need to be able to go to work for that uh, airline uh, that uh, is hiring. And we're going to even though we have all these things going on, there's still going to be a need for pilots uh, as the uh, as we have been shut down uh, during this little break time here. Uh, pilots are still getting older and they still have to retire. So that just means that uh, when they hit 65, whether they're flying an airplane or sitting at home, um, that they can't do that anymore. And FAA really is not talking about changing any of that type of thing. So. Uh, we're still going to need pilots. Uh, a lot of pilots are retiring this year, uh, and uh, e even though during these crazy times. So it's going to be good uh, to get into the aviation business. Uh, it is not an easy career path as far as uh, the time that it takes to go through our two year program and getting a commercial uh, airplane license. Um, like I said, you're able to um, be a commercial pilot. It's just that you can't go to work for an airline until you have, uh, right now, the time is 1,500 hours. By going through our program and getting an associate degree, uh, you're able to do that at 1,250 hours. It's called the Restricted ATP program. And that Restricted ATP uh, is, uh, like I said, going to allow you to get that aviation job at 1,250 versus 1,500 hours. So. In this case, an associate degree is definitely uh, counting towards something, at least 250 hours of flight time that cost you quite a bit or being as a flight instructor to build that type of time. Um, and <clears throat> the other thing that we have is that a majority of our students come to CTC and then they go to Texas A&M Central Texas and complete a bachelor's degree. And A&M Central Texas is in the works of getting uh, the restricted ATP certificate. Uh, and if you have a bachelor's degree, the time goes down to a thousand hours of total flight time versus 1500 or 1250, just getting the associate degree. So a lot of our students proceed on and, and go to AM Central Texas and end up with a bachelor's degree in aviation science. And like I said, it will help um, uh, bring that time down as well. Hopefully, uh, they, they're still in the process of completing their requirement. Um, right now, it's just getting a, a bachelor's degree. So the uh, to get into our program, the one of the things that we do require is that a student goes out and gets an FA second class medical certificate. Uh, we call it a flight physical, and that's how you should kind of think about it. All it is is uh, going in and seeing a specific type of medical examiner uh, has been certified by the FAA to give you a flight physical to make sure that uh, your fitness for flight would be what you would need. And a second class medical allows you to get that commercial pilot's license. You want to be careful because a lot of times when you go to the medical examiner there and, and when students start out, you only need a third class medical. That's the lowest grade. You only need a third class medical to start flying. And the, uh, and, and you could have a third class with a private pilot certificate, but we want to make sure that your fitness for flight is going to be uh, well enough to be able to obtain at least a commercial pilot certificate. And that's where that second class medical comes in. So um, once you have your second class medical certificate, uh, we would then give you a petition to en uh, enable you to register for the commercial or uh, the uh, private pilot ground school and the private pilot flight class. We actually can have students start both of those classes uh, in the same semester. So you can do the ground school and the flight course at the same time. 
Uh, <clears throat> currently, we are working through the legalities of uh, being able to get back up into the airplane right now. Uh, we're, it looks like what we're going to have is the uh, student's going to come in and fill out a form. We have a sanitation station that uh, allows the student to kind of uh, uh, clean their hands, that type of thing. And then we'll go to the airplane before and after the flight. Uh, the airplane and all the equipment that we use is going to be wiped down uh, to make sure that we keep everybody, keep our students safe during this time. So uh, we're putting those measures into place and hopefully uh, by the time we get to the summer semester that we'll be able to, to actually go out and fly and do that type of thing. Again, we are still working through a couple of other little bugs. Uh, the FAA won't allow new students to start. Uh, and, and unless it is face to face, we can't start an online class. Um, the FAA in their memo would, uh, during this time doesn't allow us to begin new students online. So we're, we're trying to get uh, the permission and do everything that, that's required to have a smaller classroom size of students sit in the classroom and uh, be able to take that ground school class that they'll need to continue flying. Our program, we have about 80 to 100 students. Uh, the, the number kind of fluctuates depending on time of year, where the number drops a little bit in the summertime, uh, but in the fall semesters are probably one of our busiest times. Uh, right now, I think we already have about 10 students signed up for the fall or wanting to get signed up in the fall. And so it looks like it will be a busy fall semester. Uh, we normally will take about 25 students in the private pilot course and then we do have some other students that maybe already have a private pilot certificate um, and we're wanting to work on the next course would be an instrument rating and so as they come in and um, they could they could start working on that instrument rating uh, with us as well after they complete that course and at least six uh, credit hours at central texas college then we can give them evaluated credit for the private pilot certificate um, and and they would receive up to seven credit hours um, if they came to us and they already had that particular certificate or rating. Uh, let's see. Um, we have any questions, Mayor? Right now, we pretty much have uh, the main question. I think would be: Are you actually going to start any classes in June? We, we will definitely have uh, some online classes, the ground, if uh, our ground school courses or what's in question right now. Uh, technically, if a student, and, and I know there's some students that are on here that were in my class last semester, if they took advanced air navigation, they would be able to continue to do commercial ground school. We could we could uh, assign those students up for commercial ground school. The private pilot in the instrument are the, are the two classes and advanced air navigation that uh, we're gonna need permission to start face-to-face -face, uh, before we would be able to um, offer those in the summertime. Um, like I said, we do have them uh, already set up in the, in, in the fall semester but we're still um, getting permission to have those face-to-face -face for the summertime, so. Okay, and so if, if anybody wants to go ahead and register for classes, um, they would probably need to contact the department to make sure that those classes are gonna be offered or how would they go about that? Yeah, we're going to be updating the website once we have our final word on um, what we're going to be able to do with that. Um, but yeah, if they call the uh, office number, uh, our department assistant is available. Uh, and like I said, once once we do have some um, information, we'll be able to update everybody on that as well. So. Um, how is the new student or in, uh, I have somebody here who's asking, how's the new student orientation going to work? My boss, Mr. Turner, is wanting to know. Um, I heard something about new student orientation. Yes, they want uh, somebody wants to know how the new student orientation is going to work. Uh, that's actually going to be on. I don't know. Do you guys have a new student orientation? Uh, normally, the when they come into that, starting on that first semester, um, when they come into their uh, ground school course, um, that would correspond with their flying class that would take place all at that same time. So, okay. 
Um, if you're talking, if the somebody's asking about the general new student orientation, that is actually going to be on May 28th. It starts at nine o'clock in the morning, and we're going to be having breakout sessions during the day, depending on what your degree interest is. But if you, um, that's going to be May 28th, and then we'll have a general session at nine, and then afterwards we'll have some breakout sessions and we can get some more information out. Please kind of keep a lookout on our social media. We'll be sharing that really soon. And that will be online? Yes, everything will be online for the actual new student orientation for all mm -hmm. students that are starting. And actually, if anybody's just interested in uh, coming to, to CTC and they're not sure and they want to join in, we're going to ask them to please participate. And it, will that be through WebEx? That's going to be through WebEx. And we're also going to be streaming it live through Facebook in case anybody has any questions. Also. Awesome. Um, on, the, on the website, on the uh, aviation, we actually have a short link uh, if you if you go to the cpd.edu um, backslash uh, aviation, it will actually take us to our uh, a landing page for our program. Um, if you click through, you can find a contact form. If students fill out a contact form, they'll be able to download our um, program information. Uh, it's a little twelve-page uh, brochure uh, that talks about our program and. Uh, as well as a &M, it has the degree plan and all the different courses that we offer and their cost um, currently associated with those. We're thinking in the fall there's going to be an increase in cost, but we haven't worked through that just yet as well. So. Have you, um, can you share your screen? Do you know how to share the screen so that the students can see your page? I do, yeah, I'm sure. While you're pulling that up, I have a question. It says regarding existing students who have completed previous ground school, private pilot and instrument ground schools, will they likely continue online ground school for the next phase or are we awaiting FAA guidance specifically for advanced air navigation and commercial ground schools? We are um, waiting. Uh, the FAA has really given their guidance. They said that the uh, that you can't start um, the new uh, ground school course um, online. So that would have to be a face-to-face -face class. Um, and we are, like I said, working with the administration to come up with some plans on how to um, get to that point to be able to do that. So, so all ground schools have to be done face-to-face. -face. All new ground schools, yes, have to be face to face. We were able, the FAA, because of the virus, the, they did give us um, permission to complete those ground school courses online. Um, even though, so the FAA is a little bit different. It's like going to uh, going through accreditation, and the FAA says, uh, you know, tell us about your delivery method. And our delivery method is has traditionally been face to face, um, and uh, we don't have an online class uh, for those ground school classes. You would have to go through a completely different uh, approval type of process. Uh, the information, the uh, uh, FA goes through and makes sure everything is up to date on the on that type of website when people are, are maybe going out and buying that type of ground school online. Um, so we really, you know, we don't have that in place. Um, it's not really something that, that we could do. We're not set up uh, from an education standpoint to really be that type of format. Um, and it just makes more sense for it to be face to face. Um, uh, there's a couple of students that were in the private pilot ground school class and um, I, I think um, they did well. Uh, but it was it was quite tricky t um, teaching cross country planning online this semester, uh, using a map and a plotter and, and trying to show students what they needed to do uh, while they were at home and I was at home and, uh, and not being able to physically show them uh, how to manipulate the chart and the and the map plotter to be able to come up with what we needed was quite tricky. So it. Uh, uh, it, it tested everybody, I think, this semester. So um, I'm going to share my screen here. Um, I'll take you to the um, aviation page. And 
and on our aviation page, um, again, this is just talks a little bit about the, the program or actually the career is our landing page. And then down here is our degree in science. If we go to the um, aviation science, um, it will actually, it, you can bring up the degree plan. And then, um, or at the bottom down there is the link and the contact us if you fill out that contact us form uh, the student will be able to um, download our brochure as, as long as and there's all our other contact information as well the, the office number for our office assistant um, is uh, we'll go to actually right now we'll go to a Google um, voice number and she'll be able to help you as needed. So. And if somebody, um, so pretty much they should contact um, your assistant, Ariel Sanders, right? Yes. And then get some information as to how to contact. If you, if the person needs to talk to somebody else, then Ariel will make arrangements. Um, there, there's the student online, David, you sent me an email. Um, again, we're not actually flying right now, but. Um, when we do, um, I, I've already sent your email to Abe and uh, we'll probably get you out here uh, to start filling out the paperwork to start your flight folder and that type of thing. So, um, I, I didn't tell you about the our aircraft. We do have, yeah, you bet. Um, we do have 14 different airplanes. We have uh, nine Cessna 152s uh, that we use as our primary trainer um, and the only only issue that we would have is if there's a, a weight issue um, between the pilot and the flight instructor, we may have to put you in a little bit larger airplane. That's the Piper Archer. We have two Piper Archers uh, that are mainly used for our instrument training course. Uh, you go through an instrument training course, we have 35 hours of flight time that makes up time in an airplane, uh, as well as in a flight simulator. We have a Frasca flight simulator. Uh, it's a level five FTD flight training device uh, that goes through, gets certified by the FAA, um, and uh, we're able to count some of that time towards the 35 hours that you would need uh, in that particular course. Um, <clears throat> so we can simulate a lot, a lot of different things in the simulator. Um, once you complete your instrument rating, uh, you would go into the commercial course, and we have two classes now. Uh, that make up the commercial flight course. Uh, we went through some recertification stuff with the FAA as far as the flight time and the way the flight courses were set up. Um, we used to kind of have everything combined uh, and uh, they allowed us to, to count that. Uh, we may be able to go back to that sometime, but right now what would happen is you get a private pilot license and you go into the instrument course and then you work on the commercial uh, which is 120 hours. So we broke it up into two different semesters uh, that a student would go through and um, work on that particular um, course, the commercial flight course. Um, and they're going to be flying a Piper Aero. Um, a little, it's a retract airplane, so the landing gear goes up and down, uh, and they're able to get that experience uh, in that particular aircraft. Um, and then for a multi-engine trainer, we have a Cessna 310. Uh, the Cessna 310 is going through some maintenance right now. Uh, we, um, we we expect to get the engine back soon. We had some uh, repair on the engine that we were doing. Um, and then when we get the engine back, we're actually going to be upgrading the avionics in the aircraft. And so it's going to be uh, almost a, a brand new type of airplane uh, when we get everything up and running in that. But uh, uh, we're looking to do that very soon. Um, we have a... Um, we've been able to hire a supervisor mechanic. Um, that position was open for a while. 
um, but we were able to get to a mechanic to fill that. Um, Mr. Simmons has over 25 years of experience working on general aviation type of aircraft. So uh, he's been able to, to start getting their airplanes uh, back up fixed with maintenance. Again, just like I was talking about the pilots, that time still passes. There's an inspection on an airplane that takes place, and that's called an annual inspection. And every 12 months, you would have to update or uh, inspect the airplane to make sure everything is okay with it. It doesn't matter if it flies or not. Maybe it just sat on the ground for 12 months. You still have to do that annual inspection. And uh, I think in, in April, we had actually three airplanes that, that were coming up on their annual inspection. So even though we weren't flying them uh, during that month of April, uh, we still have to do uh, those types of inspections. So Mr. Simmons has been able to help us out and get those airplanes up and running as well. Um, also during the, the, the little break that we had from flying, um, our flight instructors worked on developing an aviation meteorology course uh, for online distribution. So. Um, that is a class, I think, in the fall semester that we do have it set up that it will be um, that it can be taught online. If need be, as we go through this type of thing, so um, we're also going to be making that uh, available as an additional online course um, and. We're, we're doing a push towards open educational resource OER stuff and. Uh, that particular class is just going to be using FA publications and stuff. So there won't be any books that the student would have to purchase, and they'll be able to take that aviation uh, meteorology course. Again, like I said, I think in the fall, uh, we'll be, we're, we're planning on having it both uh, online and probably face-to-face um, -face if, if we're able to as well. So. Awesome. Uh, this has been really informative. I think a lot of people, including your current students, have some questions about how things are going to flow. So it it seems like you've been able to answer a, a lot of those questions they might have had. Um, and you had some really good questions coming from them. So thank you very much to everybody who asked questions or had comments. Um, we had a more definitive answer on, you know, specific dates and how everything's going to go. But like I said, it's a, as we work through this little process, I think it's a learning curve for everybody. But uh, we, I think we'll be able to provide a, a nice, safe environment uh, for students to even come out and, and, you know, sit in that airplane, be next to a flight instructor and still provide that that safe environment that uh, students need and desire. So, um, Hopefully, in the near future, we'll be able to get everybody back up on. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Whitesell, for helping us get the information out and everybody who participated. I really want to say thank you to all of you. Um, you will be able to watch this later on again through their Facebook Live. And we're also posting all of these videos in the Central Texas College YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel. So you're welcome to also go back and, and look at that information. And if you think that there's somebody who might need the information, please share it with them as well. Um, I know that that's one of the biggest things right now is trying to make sure that everybody understands we're here to help you. So please reach out to us. Let us know if there is something else that we can do to help you. So thank you to everybody who participated. And um, thank you, Mr. Whitesell. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, everybody have a great day. Bye.